All right. Hello, guys. Glad to have you on board again today. I put it my face in front of the camera. So just a little once in a while, you remember that there's a human being on the other side of uh, the computer right behind the screen. So despite that, of course, don't worry. We're still going to look at charts more than anything else today. Uh, but I think it's worth it uh, uh, kind of releasing a global video on how to prepare for summer trading, kind of a general tutorial. On uh, uh, I'll share my personal assumptions. Once again, what matters in here is not just to blindly copy what I'm going to be saying or do uh, and share in here, but just to take the general assumption, how did I build those things, try to understand the background thesis so that you guys can take and adapt to your own personal portfolios. All right, so the reason why I would like to generally uh, uh, tell you about this thing is because most importantly, from, from most early traders or less experienced trader, I would say below five to six years experience in the market, most of the time you're probably going to be familiar with the general trading adage, like sell may go away, there's nothing too fancy happening in summer, just, I mean, think of something else, you just go back, uh, volumes go back in September, and you, you, you would definitely be much better uh, enjoying your vacations and just thinking about this trading deal back in September. Okay, though this is absolute full of shit, <laughs> I can definitely go straight forward with that. I've been fooled in the past because of this thing. I've missed so much important stuff in summer trading that I've learned that lesson the hard way. Now I get prepared for summer so that I know that three things can happen. Of course, number one, nothing absolutely happens. Well, you're going to waste a bit of time. So the general scheme of how do, how would you prepare for summer is to get ready for both uh, for, for three of the for, for these three outcomes. The first one is, well, hey, yeah, sorry, folks, nothing happens. So you really don't want to be wasting too much time staring at the charts or dating scenarios, knowing that, yes, sometimes nothing actually happens. But it's definitely not all of the times. There are also two other options. The first one is, the second one, sorry, is that sometimes there are some major breakthrough catalysts throughout summer, which means we are, nobody pays too much attention, but something major breaks through and, and creates generally even more dramatic shift in prices because it's generally causing some volatile alert to trigger, meaning the market will suddenly explode and wake up from summer like, yeah, no one was really caring, but somehow now everybody does because there is a big callus. And it feels like all the attention that was spread away from the actual stock market or markets in general tend to go back all at the same time. And that generally fuels hell a lot of FOMO stupid trades. So whenever this one ever happens, and we'll see that throughout the summer, there are risks of this to happen, and we'll try to highlight and frame those risks that I will potentially be able to follow through on, uh, uh, there, I'm going to need arguments, not just because this thing pumps, I'm going to follow through, because that's the general FOMO stuff that you don't want to be a bone. Uh, though, if something critical enough could break and trigger some trades, which are the technical elements that would confirm something truly uh, breakout is is happening in order for me to follow it. What are levels past beyond, I will not follow anyway. And if we go on a major impactful news flow, how can I even get prepared? Like meaning, is my current portfolio's exposition well established in the right direction to profit from these potential outcomes, all right? Like trying to figure out what are the most probable, unprobable stuff, okay? And if they were to occur, are you really prepared for this, yes or no, all right? So it's like anticipating potential shit without eventually uh, 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 necessarily betting on it. It's just being prepared just in case so that if you miss the shot because of for whatever reason you're just hiking at that moment, you're out of network activity and you're going to figure it out 24 or 48 hours later. I mean, these things can happen. Or for whatever reason, the thing triggers and right now you're just uh, on the beach and you're hardly going to be able to trade with the reflections on the, uh, on the, sc on the screen of your, uh, uh, of your cell phone. And most of the time, even I personally never trade big size on the phone. I mean, I can basically do some random adjustment or tiny position entries, but I rarely, I mean, this is actually a rule. I never actually do take big chunk trades on the cell phone. That's number one rule. So if for whatever reason, something very big occurs and you just can't make it, well, are you prepared for this anyway? That's how you prepare in summer. And last but not least, most of the time, people think summer is uninteresting because price doesn't necessarily move that much. But I can tell you by history that, well, Actually, throughout Q3, which is generally, well, uh, as a professional way of doing things, it's generally the shifting moment in the closes, the kind of prices that you left the market with prior to the summertime and the prices of which you're going to get back at it when September kind of more uh, volume will show up. Most of the time, the markets, 
either does nothing, like we stated, break through because there's an external catalyst, or generally trans, but in an unconventional manner, which means this is generally the washing machine types of patterns, which means if the market is trading in a mature range, daily, weekly chart range, or generally the appropriate context, well, sometimes throughout the summer in a very, very boring low volume type of trading, you will see the market breaking, which means it will break out of this range, not with the fancy way it generally does, meaning high breakout candle, uh, significant enough to raise attention on the market. Well, sometime throughout the summer, you get those breakouts in a much more subdued manner, which means the market breaks boring. It's like breaking with a couple of one, two percent candles a day. Uh, and generally does it in a 45 degree angle kind of washing machine pattern. Very boring, which means you don't get that sparkle that tells you something great is happening, right? Still, most of the time, these very interesting breakouts will lead their way boringly out of June right until September without raising too much attention. But the thing is that generally right on September, they will be right at the confirmation, which means most of the time they've already doubled down on the range that's been broken through, which means your interest on this market goes back in September where most of the fun already happened. You've missed all the breakouts interesting prices just because they weren't significant enough to show up in your news flow. So that's one thing you can very well get prepared for. So we're going to do this today. Let's switch the charts. All right, though, first we're going to have a quick review of global asset uh, markets. Always have a look at the general market scheme. So the S&P 500 is trading at the third range boundary. And we're going to go over this. Uh, uh, we've made that already in the weekly updates. So the thing is that the general market isn't going to be very interesting. As you can see, we're already trading in that type of environment in a 45 degree angle to the upside. So there is still room for improvement in the S&P's prices, but we're pretty much already in areas in which it doesn't really worth it. There is also risks of consolidation and pretty much, I think, all across the summer, well, God knows, could go up, could go lower, who gives a fuck? Like I said, I personally don't pay too much attention to the SPX unless there is an external catalyst. So if there is such catalyst, what nature could actually, it uh, could this be? Well, my personal assumption has always been a couple of factors. First of all, the VIX is pretty damn low. Very, very, very low. We've broke through the levels post-COVID. Remember back then we were trading all-time highs and we're below those prices at the third range boundary level. So that could tell me two things. Either that's the stupidest level of complacency, <laughs> that means something ugly is going to show up and we're going to have hell a lot of volatility and the number one target for this to happen is to go back to the trend channel, which means going back into this area in here. That means the VIX will pop right up from 14 to 25 in a very, very short notice. Of course, that means an external catalyst is fucking up. Remember, we've mentioned that in the previous uh, weekly updates that there is some unconventional stuff that I see uh, as the way bond traders are actually trading now. So it's been telling me without... 100% guarantee, of course, but just something goes wrong. And I can tell that these guys trade something ugly could happen throughout the summer. So that's the reason why I've been raising that alarm and just says, I have quite some technicals suggesting, yes, some volatility could occur, which means something unexpected could be a spark on top of it to trigger just a dynamic to explode. That doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world. It just says, well, I see the VIX very subdued and currently not pricing in what I see the bond markets uh, pricing in, which means the bond market is ready for an event. When on the other hand, the VIX isn't. So one of them is lying. And I generally tend to say the bond market traders rarely do lie because, well, there's so much money involved. So we'll see all about that. Are the bond traders right or wrong? Well, I would say is that I'd rather like to get prepared for volatility. If it happens, what could that be? Well, first of all, I'm going to buy some VIX just as an insurance. The current volatility spreads are very low. So I'm really, really considering buying VIX now for, for the whole summer. I'm probably going to roll over each and every month because these are contracts with expiry and they generally have quite rollovers, quite expensive rollovers. So I'm going to roll over the contracts, kind of an insurance, which means if something rolls wrong, I will get nice profits from the VIX. And on the other hand, I expect to take losses from these trades. It's just because I have a bullish portfolio and I simply don't want to swim naked just because I have highlighted some problems in the bond market. By those problems, remember that I can see them in the yield curve, 
which has uh, been measured for me in a spread of three months to two years, reference to a 10-year scheme, and we're right in the middle in here, which means to me in here, this is the break-even point of stability. So if we remain stable, for whatever reason, there's not too much shit hitting the market, we're probably going to stay there. As you can see, maintaining still higher low points, Okay, that would be one way to do it. All I would notice in here is that we're squeezing, which means, of course, we could try to go higher for a third range boundary on the shorter time frame. Okay, that would be going higher in here. Okay, and try to reject this area. That could be kind of a boring summer type, aka in September, we would be trading at significantly similar levels. Uh, rather than the opposite way around. The cooldown effect would be if we go there, that means the market is deleveraging. That means probably to me that another credit event has occurred, and that's what I fear the most. That's what I think the bond market has priced in for the summer, or at least get ready for. Reason why I also think this could be driven by credits is because if I look at the monthly, uh, sorry, the weekly charts, on the junk bonds, I can clearly see in here that we've built a compression triangle. It's associated with the impact of that volatility alert, which still uh, leads into early 2024. And if, for whatever reason, I don't know, Fed hiking another 25 basis points on an already very tensed market, remember that there are 30% zombie companies in the US who basically just roll their debts uh, uh, um, over time, and well, if you get another 25 basis point rate hike on the uh, low uh, on the risk-free uh, government bonds, well, basically that translates into a two to three percent upward yield on junk bonds, which generally tend to overprice the low risk. So, in that sense, well, that means it could get the additional. A drop in the buckets that makes it all leak. And if that ever have to happen, well, the junk bonds may collapse. That means uh, we get a cascading liquidation event on those zombie companies. In that sense, well, junk bonds could try to trade back into all-time lows, the trades we've had back in COVID. We've experienced that again in here last year with a huge tension over the rate hike cycle. And right now we could see if, for example, yep, the final drop on the bucket from the Fed with just 25 basis points could be the one that the Fed shouldn't have done. In that sense, if it goes there, that's another credit crisis. That means yet another Fed intervention will probably happen afterwards. So same old story. If it happens, what could be the consequences of it? The Fed stepping in because probably out of junk bonds, the next events that will show up and I would like to see happening if I want to trigger events it's going to be the regional banks. Same thing in here, volatility alerts, bros. And as you can see, the thing is that the volatility boundary is lower. So if you see the junk bonds rolling to the side, uh, rolling to the downside, sorry, coupled with the KRE breaking below that area, same story, going for the volatility boundary, going for probably breaking these lows. To me, that's the sign that the shit is hitting the fan. I expect in that sense the VIX to break resistance very significantly, though I'm going to let it ride, of course. That means God knows how the stock market will react. But I think anyhow and anyway, if there is Fed interventions, that's diluting money supply, though everything that has uh, international type of activity, aka every company that makes their profits not entirely on the US-based stuff, and can actually make profits in euros, yen, whatever other currencies. If you debase the dollar, simple math, that means those stocks go up, okay? So this could be very troubling for the actual S&P 500 to anticipate. It could be very noisy, but not necessarily end of the world crashing type of scenario, which the bears have been selling all over the place. We'll see all about that, but what could happen to me if, and only if, this very bearish scenario would show up, that means the S&P 500 will very likely break out of this trend line. I mean, going back at it, and probably trading below. Question is, is it really going to be a bearish signal or not? To me, anytime we trade back into the 50% context is a buy for me. Though I'll be ready to jump in the S&P 500 if this happens. And until then, I'll get myself and my ass covered with some VIX trade and a couple of bear trades on the Doge uh, uh, index, which has some slightly more interesting short-term signals to uh, compensate my risk. Remember, my broad portfolio is only up for now. So of course, I want to have some safety belts as I see that the stock market is positioned on the third range boundary area, which in a pullback context is not an area to sell, it's an area to profit fucking take. 
Okay, my portfolio, stock investment portfolio, is invested up until half of 2024. So this third range boundary is a risk limitation area. I'm not going to take profits because most of my stocks have underperformed the stock market, which has just been led by 10 names. So most of what I have in my portfolio hasn't performed, of course, despite NVIDIA. Uh, but that's really the way it is. So I took some partial profits on NVIDIA. The rest of the market, the rest of my portfolio is still exposed to the upside up until 2024, okay, for the end of my cycle. The question is, of course, if it goes down, I'd rather like to have covered trades on the S&P 500 rather than taking profits on stocks that haven't performed yet. All right, but remember that's what it is. The only thing that I think could go wrong and that I will be ready to profit from is if I see junk bonds going down with a key RE going all time lows, trying to go for the volatility boundary. In that sense, the VIX is gonna give me some nice gains. I'm gonna take some profits on the DAX and I'm probably going to reinvest those gains buying the support on the S&P 500 if it goes back trading slightly at the 4,000 mark or so. All right, that's minimum. Of course, and I'm gonna trade by signals. Remember, I never trade blindly, but that's one kind of opportunity. If something ugly shows up, my portfolio will probably be ready for it because most of my stocks are international stocks, which means if for whatever reason we've got a Fed intervention to save the actual regional banks once again, that means Fed balance sheet expansion, that means money supply expansion, that means dollar denominated assets with international settlements, uh, with international uh, uh, revenues, will obviously compensate the dilution of the denominator, aka the dollar being debased. That's where the way it is. So that's for stocks. The other things is, of course, we're going to have to talk about commodities and metals. Very, very important things to me. Remember, we're looking for uh, three types of markets. The ones that are building daily and weekly ranges, mature ranges, which will give us the opportunity to eventually trade the breakout out of these ranges on a very boring 45 degree angle type. So don't expect huge explosion candle. Of course, despite the volatile scenario, which we have mentioned, despite that, that means everything that has a very clear, neat accumulation or mature range on daily and weekly charts have the very likely probability to break this range throughout summer. All right. So for the uh, uh, actual WTI, the break, uh, the range is pretty damn easy to figure out. That's this massive, massive triangle kind of consolidation which we're in. I personally will trade the break out of it. As we're in a bullish area on the low risk strategy, I'm not going to sell. OK, that means if we break it down, I'm not going to be interested into shorting the WTI. We're in a bullish area. So in a bullish area, I do only buying activity. On the other hand, if we go upward, I'll be ready to bullish trade this breakout. Same story as usual. Remember, these breakouts won't happen with a lot of noise. They can be the 45 degree angle boring stuff. Remember, your final target is somewhere around early September. And generally, remember one thing, the market will break the range boringly without noise all across the summer and be at the confirmation level by September. So that's something very important for you to take away. So if we were to break that one by the upside, and I don't know, it could very well break to the downside. But like I said, I don't give a fuck to the downside exposition. Bullish area means I'm only buying in here, not selling. Okay. So I only have and uh, only pay attention to the bull side. If it breaks, that's the breakout area. So only thing I know, if WTI trades at $76, I will probably support that move, which means I already have bull trades in here. I want profit take at 76. I think we're probably going to get there and get through. If we do this, then we're going to have to double the breakout, which means target will be $86 for September. We could be trading in the resistant context at somewhere like $80, $90, and we would already be at the expected targets for September, which means those traders will be waiting for September because it's not worth it to spend so much time in the summer trade. I'd rather like to get my tan very well cared. And in that sense, well, fuck the market. The market will still be there in September. Yeah, it will be there. It will be right on target, which means you'll go back by September and you'll have missed all the fun. So very, very, very important stuff. Believe me, I've learned that lesson the hard way. Now I always get prepared for summer trade. I also spend a hell of a lot less time in front of the computer for sure. That's also why I get prepared, all right? I get ready so that if some unexpected things show up, I hopefully get the portfolio well exposed to profit from it. And otherwise, I get prepared on the assets that I will be willing to trade on a boring breakout stuff. And all the other ones who don't break, well, I let them behave. All right, so that's the way it goes. 
So WTI gonna be interesting. If it goes by 76, I see huge probability of a boring breakout through summer. Target will be 85 to $90 tops for September, which is exactly when I will start profit taking and let the rest for the dumps. Okay, silver, oh boy, massive range. In here we're in a weekly range. So if this big boy moves, could be very, very uh, uh, sensitive. But the thing is that in here, the breakout would be somewhere in here. So I would say somewhere around 25 or so. If silver was to trade, uh, is to trade 25 throughout the summer, same story, remember, it's been pretty volatile recently. So the reference in here could be very volatile, but it doesn't want to be volatile to bring attention. Okay, so you don't want to see kind of massive 5 6% update. You really want to see the boring kind of stuff. Remember, September target, okay? So your target in September will pretty much be doubling the range, okay? So that would be trading silver somewhere around $32, okay? Though, try to set your stage for $32. And as you can see, it could be trading that way, boringly, just like that. No impulse, no 5 6% days to raise attention, just a boring 45 degree angle is very, very doable. As you can see, we've done it in the past. So, to me, very possible as well for silver. A bit less likely, but still possible. For gold, same story in here. Massive weekly range. It's actually very, very old. Uh, uh, though, I get ready for metals. That doesn't mean I'm ready for them. Just uh, uh, wait. But if it happens, same story in here. The breakout level is the previous all-time highs. It's somewhere around 2,000, no, 2,100. If we get out there, same story. We're going to double down, which means the target will be somewhere around 22k, 2.2k. Uh, and in that sense, well, expect to be there by September. So same story. Put yourself in September. Drive a 45 degree angle, and there you go. As you can see, this is totally doable. We've done that in the past, and people weren't that much excited about gold back then. So, could very well happen. Chess has to be boring. You getting used to see up days, regular basis, nothing that just stands out of the ordinary, okay? You really want to hear about the breakout only when you boringly go back to your seat and say, yeah, fuck it, the target's already been reached out to. So that's for the potential for metals, same thing could happen for platinum and stuff like that. Cryptocurrencies is where I personally think the most interesting stuff could happen. For simple reasons, same story in here, the big range or the weekly range, so don't expect them to be breaking these ones <laughs> throughout summer. But as you can see, the beauty of it is that they're already trading at a 45 degree angle kind of washing machine pattern. So the best I can think for crypto is for them to just keep on doing that. Like the boring stuff of flat consolidation, one day impulsion and then nothing. And only those who can precisely time those impulses trade will be able to profit from them. But most of the time, let's be ready. Understand that you probably won't be in front of your computer at that time or you're going to have to trade on the cell phone, which means experience has taught me as well. One of my shittiest trades ever taken has been traded on uh, um, the cell phone and I missed the, the coma, which means I basically uh, uh, had that thing, uh, uh, kind of a fat finger trade, which was 10x what I expected. And I really, really have blamed myself for this for a long time. So I never trade on the cell phone anymore, uh, uh, unless very necessary cases. So on that sense, that's really the way it goes. To me, I think crypto is uninteresting as fuck. As you can see, we're already building those 45 degree angle temperature channel. The targets in which prices could be uninteresting by September are the ones we already know by, which means if we were to go trade on the weekly reference that would be trading in the context by September. That means basically we replicate the current activity and we would be in the resistant context somewhere like 42K by September, which would be the volatility boundary as well. And we could definitely be there. If we go there, that's the same old 45 degree angle. I already have a bullish portfolio to take away, to take this away. So I'm certainly not going to trade that. Remember, in order to break out trade, I need to see a range. In here, there's no range. We're already 45 degree angles up. So if it keeps going that way, well, I have a bullish portfolio to take those profits uh, from the market without necessarily uh, intervening, okay? On the other hand, trading a washing machine, not for me, folks. This thing can go on for long. It can stop at any time. So speculating in Bitcoin, not going to make it for me. Instead, whether I think there could be some interesting stuff, and on the other things, though so Ethereum, exactly the same, all right? But as you can see in here, you start to see a range, okay? 
In Bitcoin, do you see a range? No, absolutely not, okay? In Ethereum, you start to see a trend line that could be broken, okay? So one thing in here is if we were to trade Ethereum at 22K, I think same story, breakout one-to-one -one ratio, we could be trading 2700 uh, by uh, September, okay? So that would be in here, that kind of market move, and we would be there in September trading at uninteresting price, already broken that trend line and so on. So Ethereum could be a valid candidate for this. That's actually the reason why I kept my trade open for my flow trade. Remember, that's what I told you on uh, previous Wednesday. This is the target in which I will take those profits if it ever happens that way. But you can be damn sure that I'm going to be following through the breakout of 2200 on the uh, 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 Ethereum chart if it goes there, because we can clearly see in here that there's been a range. Okay, Adam? Well, same story, big range, okay? Big triangle in here. We actually already broken that one down, sorry. So question is, are we going to reintegrate and break to the opposite side? If we break to the opposite side, here's the breakout area. Here's the one-to-one -one ratio. Target for Adam would be somewhere around $20, and we could very well be there by September. Okay, so that's one thing as well. Pay attention to this. If you do that, September is in here, okay? So that's kind of hell of a 45 degree angle. And remember, this has to be boring. You don't want this to raise attention. So if this has to happen, for example, Adam, put yourself a target, okay, early September, here we go. Okay, we said 20K, that could be this types of markets, okay? That means I don't want to see a 20 plus day to raise people's attention and to get people to FOMO trade or whatever. Just want to see this boring kind of action, okay? Each and every day, two to 3% at most, and boringly we'll be right on targets by September trading $20, okay? That's the kind of assets that'll be definitely willing to trade upon breakout, okay? These are the boring type of breakout trade, which means in terms of Adam, if it gets to trade 30 bucks, I will buy at 30 bucks, put a stop loss in here and take the profits at double, okay? That means all of those that I trade, I will buy the breakout, okay? In a boring fashion, I would just buy and forget. And right by September, either I'm stopped out or I'm profit taken. And I can tell you for sure, this thing is profitable by far. It's just because somewhat around those summer trades, generally some very interesting breakout occurs. It's just they happen in a different fashion and people just don't give a fuck about that. Though Adam is one candidate, boy, Chainlink. I mean, look at that. That's the range. Same story, Chainlink, 45 degree angle. September, early October, we could be trading $6 billion market cap. Though that would definitely be doable. Boring 45 degree angle as well. You don't want to see a big, massive upper shadow candle or stuff like that. If it happens that way with a catalyst, I don't want to buy the breakout. I'm only buying the boring stuff. If it goes 45 degree angle of the breakout level, I'm going to be buying this stop at the bottom and let it behave. Behave. Of course, could very well happen with a breakout to the downside, remember, but one story short in here, I don't sell those long-term supports on cryptos. So same story as before with the actual WTI. When you're in the long-term buying area, the low risk buying supports, the fuck you sell. You never do that, okay? So I'm never gonna sell Chainlink, never gonna sell Adams or stuff like that. Up only, but it doesn't mean I bought, okay? Remember, if it is with, noise and FOMO trade, like I wake up one morning, I see a 12% candle and people talking about it, I'm not following. Never, ever. If I see boring, boring 45 degree angle, few candles, uh, uh, lots of candles to get to the breakout level, no noise, no updates, this is what I'm buying, all right? So for cryptos, all of those that have daily, weekly, clearly visible range and levels to break through, if we get to those levels with a boring fashion, I'm in. Stop at the lows, patience, and we'll see where we are in September. That's the way it goes. All right, guys. Though uh, I think it's more than enough now. I'm going to switch to some how of a conclusion. But you know more than enough there is to know. Okay, summer trading doesn't have to be complicated. It's a very simple plan. How do I get prepared for summer? And what you can take away from that video isn't very complicated. First off is that three things can happen. Nothing, very boring, uh, 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 very boring breakouts, and uh, a catalyst breakout type of stuff. So for the nothing burger, where that means you've highlighted your levels, you've put in some alerts, well, alerts just won't trigger and you'll be there by September and nothing would have triggered, you, you'll do nothing, all right? Option number two, we have volatile breakouts. Well, on that one, like we stated, most of the time you don't want to be FOMOing an impulsive candle, despite the scenarios that you've prepared for, which means you just brainstorm whatever potential bearish or bullish catalyst could happen. The very uh, uh, um, the ones 
that could make sense. Remember that generally in order to trigger volatility, something must be unexpected. So it must show out of nowhere, but in a sector or something that you could eventually anticipate. If you don't have any reasons to understand that, well, you can take out my assumption and to say, I tell you so, I can definitely see that if something happens, it's very likely going to be on the credit side and specifically in the US and probably regarding zombie companies. And this is where we can see some potential problems. If that's the case, you will see the VIX going up. You will see the junk bonds going down the bottom and you will see the KRE under pressure again. If that happens, you know something is going on. Though if that something is going on and is truly not full of shit stuff, remember, you will see up days with significant volatility a little once in a while on some specific assets. But this is FOMO stupid stuff. This is pump and dump. You don't pay attention to this. The only volatility you're willing to see as worth it is the one that we've mentioned. All right, or some other scenarios you might be building, but try to make it rational and pretty concise. Okay, you don't want to have 10 unexpected scenarios. All right, you want to have a couple of them and get ready for it. The best way to get ahead of it is to have a portfolio that is already going to profit from this because most of the time these news flow will break through and emerge out of nowhere, and there will be not a chance for you to catch up on this. Most of the time, and by history, I can tell you so, they definitely happen when you're the least available to trade. So most of the time, we're going to see the notification on like, oh, fuck, I'm hiking or whatever. Most of the time, you don't even have network activity at some point. So you get to receive the notification by the end of the day. You look at the charts and you say, oh, fuck, something big has happened and I missed it. And you're going to be fucking pissed off because when this thing triggers, when, we, when you talk about real catalysts, the market will move fucking fast. Remember one thing, the algorithms, they never sleep. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 a year. So the thing is that you might be on vacation, but the algorithms have been programmed for these things. And if they do trigger, they'll be the first ones to profit from it, and you will be left behind by a large margin, okay? So bear that one in mind. If an unexpected catalyst shows up, even if you prepared for it, just try to be prepared in a portfolio type, meaning that your investment should already be ready to profit from such an event. If that's the case, then you just say, okay, if that thing happens, I've prepared for this. Otherwise, well, I can't do nothing about it. I'll let it behave. All right. The third factor is the boring breakout. And this one is the most undermined one. I've seen so many people saying, yeah, no, you know what? It doesn't look like a breakout. I know what breakouts look like. Moreover, these things have low volume. It's really boring. That's generally the type of things I know I'm going to buy now. And two days from now, I'm going to take a 15% dump because anyway, I've been used to take slapped in the face, specifically in the cryptos. I mean, now everybody thinks that if they buy, they're going to take a 20% down candle a couple of days later. So that's really the way it is. It's no longer that, folks. We're not in a bear market. I've, I've told you multiple times. It can still happen. I would like to take a stop loss and being proven wrong, but I'm definitely going to buy. If we go for these 45 degree angle breakouts, get me right on that one. I definitely think that's the likeliest outcome throughout the summer. Everybody now thinks this is a Bitcoin dominance stuff. <laughs> Alcoins are going to the cave. They're all going to die. I'm pretty likely bet on the opposite way. Uh, we'll see about that. Of course, not all the else. Don't get me wrong. It's not going to be a flourishing out season with everyone going through the roof and pump and dump skiing all over the place. No, no, no. That's not what you want. Remember, if it pumps, don't buy that shit. You want the 45 boring during angle breakouts. And the good tokens, the one that won't make the headlines, but the ones that would have sustained buy-in by the algos. Okay, that's what I want, because I know this can very well happen throughout the summer times. That's actually the most profitable strategy in summertime. Figuring out those weekly ranges with value and tokens that, well, tokens of things or whatever. I mean, any financial asset works in here. Those boring stuff, which have underlying value, they've generally gone through some longer-term supports, and well, it feels like, yeah, the breakout hasn't happened, so probably going to happen in September. I'd rather like to let, let it be, and I'll be back at trading in September. Most of the time, hear me well, they break through the summer in a pretty fucking boring fashion. Most of the time, you will get the alert in the middle of the day, which you least want to trade on. <laughs> And you definitely can't step uh, step with stop orders in the market. Remember, the market pumps for that reason. You don't want to be in. It's really that simple. You put in alert and hopefully you will be able to trade by this day. If that's the right setup, 45 degree angle boring stuff, even if you don't instantly trade the alert, you can still be able to do it by the end of the day or tomorrow. Or something. But if the alert triggers, go take the fucking trade. That's a lesson I, I took the hard way. But now that I do trade it that way, I can definitely tell you I'm much more comfortable heading into summer. That still allows me to profit from vacation, and I hope you will do it as well. Okay, you really don't want to be looking and staring at your charts all summer long. This is why you have alerts. So use 
them. It's the best advice I could ever give you to be a profitable summer trader, okay? But don't go for the stupid scam of people who will tell you, yeah, you can be a millionaire or stuff like that. Best you can get on summer trade is a one-to-one -one ratio breakout. Very boring, and it's going to take a, a couple of months to get to your targets. But don't, don't ever touch the trade. You buy, put a stop at the low or the top if you sell. Put your targets uh, at a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes we hit with, with a nice candle. You wake up in the morning and say, oh, oh I got the profit. That, that's really the way it is, okay? Maximum target is September. Generally, most of the time, either we slowly get out there and grind our way into the target and you're going to get reached by the end of the summer uh, or sometime early September and you get your targets, all right? Generally means that these are valuable tokens, assets, whatever, and they generally reach the target right when people get their attention back in the market. <laughs> so try to be smart and try not to be left behind. At least I hope I told you something interesting today. Uh, that being said, I'm going to be far less available through summer. I uh, hope you're going to be having the luxury to take some vacations as well. I will definitely take some time, friends, families, whatever, enjoying this stuff. So I definitely spent far less time in front of the computer, which means uh, sometimes I will remove uh, uh, access to subscription on the website. When the website is going to be closed, so if you want to try the indicators for a month, uh, either you do it when the, set is, uh, when the website is open, you've got 30 days trial now, so it should be more than enough. I sincerely recommend you don't launch your triggers throughout vacation time, so you have proper time to uh, uh, test the stuff. So uh, I'm probably going to consider closing the website for summer and reopening it in September, uh, mostly because I will have far less available time to get you guys in and out uh, if you subscribe. So that's the way it goes. Uh, of course, that also means I'm going to try handling as much as I can the weekly updates, uh, uh, because there are going to be still interesting stuff but I can't guarantee there will be ones each and every week, and I simply can't guarantee they will be released on time. So I'll try to handle the weekly updates. The uh, flow trades, the ones that we record on Wednesday in, in the YouTube channel, probably considering in them out. The, the current strategies are still going on. Remember that the H1 reference time frame for the S&P 500 still interests me. If we go for the volatility boundary on the H1 time frame, I'm going to be buy it. Not with the catalyst. Remember, if this is a catalyzed market with the KRE and stuff like that, I'm definitely not going to buy that. Uh, for cryptos, this is the four hour charts. So remember, four hour lower Bollinger Bands. I'm going to buy eyes closed if we get out there. That's really the way it goes. All right. So the uh, uh, flow trades are still on, but uh, uh, um, the strategies are already known, which means I probably won't record uh, a video each and every week. You already know which strategies I'm paying attention to. And if something interesting somehow pops up and if I can figure out the time to record, I'll probably try to do it anyway, okay? So just less regular updates, uh, 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 but I'm gonna still try to be there to cover whatever interesting stuff happens through the summer. Otherwise, you've got that video to get prepared. Remember what to take out of this, not just take on my assumptions and my trades and my stuff, just learn the way I've done it, Take the valuable stuff in here. The value is from the method, all right? So here's the method I have. Try to apply it on your own favorite uh, coins, tokens, assets, whatever. That being said, I wish you guys pleasant summer vacation, and I see you guys later.